Uh, hey, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I uh, just wanted to give you uh, my thoughts of the new direction of Microsoft and where everything's going with the new Windows 8 uh, and so on and so forth from what I've learned tonight at a local meetup here in Toronto, Toronto Users Group. Um, didn't know that uh, Toronto has the world's largest number of uh, .NET uh, user groups in the world. We have probably I'd say around 12 between one little town on the east end of Toronto all the way out to about two hours west where uh, Research in Motion is uh, located. So um, we got a good uh, preview of the new Windows 8, new Windows 8 uh, development as well as uh, the new Visual Studio 2011 as well as 2012 SQL Server. So here are my opinions and the new features that I've seen. Um, there's also a preview of the new Windows Server 8. Um, there is some differences between uh, the um, 2000, I should say, Windows Server 8. Uh, they suspect it might be Windows 2000, uh, Server 2012. They don't know the naming of it yet. Probably won't see a release until uh, October um, this year of 2012. Um, but essentially the interface is a lot simpler. Um, there is the promise of a the ability to load up a headless version of Windows 8, 8 server, 2012 server, I don't know. Um, that's to uh, expedite the loading of uh, a farm of uh, or cluster of uh, virtualized uh, machines on the Windows 8 server uh, virtualized environment using hypervisor um, so there's been some massive improvements there um, some of the other highlights of Visual Studio 2011 uh, looks a lot lighter um, some radical uh, cosmetic changes um, the difference between net dot net uh, 4 4.5 is quite radical um, there's some massive improvements I did see some good old Microsoft uh, Windows uh, Vista features in there, like how to s shut down a, uh, a server. Uh, it's quite wonky. Um, Visual 2011 or Visual Studio 2011 looks pretty cool. It's supposed to be a lot faster, um, a lot lighter, um, and has a lot less gizmos in it as compared to 2010. I've worked with 2010 now for uh, a year. I don't mind it. It's pretty good. It does go into La La Land, but if you're working on an i7, which I do as well, uh, it's a pretty good uh, um, IDE. Um, in terms of the framework with a .NET 4.0 or .NET 4.5, there's some big differences in terms of true um, open source that Microsoft has put out there. Um, there are a lot of um, adoption to HTTP um, as well as uh, using more and more JavaScript, jQuery specifically, as well as something called Knockout. I'm not familiar with Knockout, but I know jQuery. Um, so Microsoft's really trying to be a lot more um, more up to date with where things are going with like languages like Rails or um, Python. Um, here in Canada, they have a dev teach coming up at the end of May. They're also including, of all things, non-Microsoft technology <laughs> courses or uh, uh, speeches, I guess, talks uh, in Ruby on Rails, of all things. So they do recognize that there is a movement from Microsoft uh, development languages and uh, Microsoft is adopting to them. Um, and obviously using more open source toolkits. They've also got some really cool features, let's say if you're using ASP uh, 4.0 or I think it's 4.5, uh, that uh, if you needed to include a variety of different Java uh, query libraries, you just do one, one um, include or using and uh, it reduces your uh, delivery of your HTML um, download from 400k to 4k obviously that's for um, for uh, mobile users the Windows 8 does look pretty cool in the world of mobile um, it's a lot lighter um, they've uh, 
they don't seem to be more focusing too much on apps per se. I don't think they really need to because obviously if you develop a a separate traditional desktop app, console app or something that for sure will run on the Windows 8 mobile. Um, not, I haven't seen the new flavors of Windows 8, um, but it does look confusing as always. Um, I do like Apple's w approach, which is just the Mac OS 10 and the iOS, um, and that's it. But with Windows 8, there's quite a lot of overlap, and, you know, brings a lot of confusion. Anyhow, um, but there are some great strides that Microsoft's trying to do with the Windows uh, Visual Studio, as well as the .NET. Um, in terms of the SQL Server, uh, there are some massive advances in terms of uh, um, basically um, pushing data both ways asynchronously um, between your app and your database. Uh, it's a lot easier. They're moving away from XAML and uh, WCF, WPF, all that seems to be have too many layers in it. So um, they're trying to lighten the load there. Um, as far as I know, with the Windows 8, um, the funny thing is that this presenter said that um, Windows 8 is actually running faster uh, on his older laptop than Windows 7 is, and I kind of believe that because it's supposed to be a much lighter uh, version of Windows 8. So, where does that leave me? Leave me in terms of uh, development or deployment. Um, I'm be soon in the next four to six weeks probably putting together a cluster with MATLAB. I did ask about Windows HPC and where Microsoft's going to go with the HPC. The response was that HPC is only something like 0.06% market share, very tiny penetration in the world of, of um, high freq uh, well, we'll call it high frequency or uh, HPC high performance computing um, from my from what I've seen I think Hadoop's really come a long ways especially with things like MapReduce uh, uh, HBase um, and some of the other sub technologies within Hadoop have really come a long way and really proven um, themselves within the world of Linux and open source um, I put up a document on the Google um, architecture of them using MapReduce and how they use it and how it's used throughout a lot of their search uh, and some other big uh, properties that Google owns. Um, I do know that um, I was just on the Amazon uh, EC2. There is a service called MapReduce uh, for cloud technology so you can deploy it on a cluster. Uh, coming from a financial world obviously that's not a a no-go. Um, I don't know anyone who'd want to do that and put it out there for the public use or at least you know put out in the public domain. I know it's supposedly secure but I kind of question that the way I've seen uh, the EC2 um, uh, technology so thus far. I'm not knocking it. I just don't think it's as secure as people would like, like you to believe. Um, <coughs> so in terms of HPC it might be safe to say within two years that the new Windows 8 or the new Windows Server 2012 might be so lightweight that it might be able to compete against uh, Hadoop and some of the more technology um, uh, drivers that I've seen with uh, with uh, Windows and .NET the way it's going it could be just as good or maybe as better uh, as um, some of the more of the open source technologies like obviously Python um, namely Python and um, probably even Scala um, is an interesting language to look at as well as well as Hadoop and um, and uh, some of its sub uh, technologies or projects so it's going to be an interesting um, decision over the next few months but regardless it's still going to be MATLAB I'm not seeing as much R as I'd like to see uh, coming from the industry point of view so I know MATLAB is definitely the choice of uh, you know, MATLAB versus R. It's just a matter of where to deploy on a Windows using um, HPC or something like uh, Linux. So we're still in that mode, but I won't be making that decision for a while. But the way it's looking, it's probably going to still on Windows. So I just want to give you a rundown of where uh, Windows 8 in the world of all the new technologies that Microsoft's been bringing out in the last few months uh, and what I thought of a preview of it.
I'll be seeing more of it, so I'll probably have some more opinions on it. But so far it looks good, but it is very, very early days. It's, it's still new technology. But get yourself beta copies now and try it out and let me know what you think.